This is the Swarm and Shoot Football Show, episode number 20. Episode 20? 20, coach. We've been rolling. Yes. Okay. This is Manny Matt Sackis, the head coach at Deviance College, and Lynn Grohl, the publisher of the Blank Swamp Football Preview Magazine. We feature Defiance College football and everything that influences our program. This show is brought to you by our friends at... Cheers, Big B Coffee. All right, we got the uh, hot vanilla latte. Vanilla bean latte. Of oh, course. there, we go. there yep. we go. We're rolling today. What a wonderful week this is as we, um, you know, uh, go into the last game of the season. And uh, it is the biggest game of the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we, we played a um, spirited game last week against Manchester. Uh, we're on the wrong side of a 19-0 to game. But I uh, saw a lot of positive things, and uh, let's visit about that a little bit and then move ahead to Bluffton. Yeah, obviously the positives defensively continue to improve. Yeah. Jovan doing a great job with this defense right now, Coach. Yeah, I, I think he has, and I, I think our whole defensive staff has done a good job uh, making some adjustments and uh, – and doing some things that will help us, um, at least have helped us to keep teams below their average, which, you know, which is a, a good indicator for improvement. Um, you know, so I, I thought considering we played Manchester earlier in the year and they scored over 50 on us in that particular game that uh, to keep them to 19 and, uh, and, and actually, um, you know, you look at it, two points was a safety that the offense gave up. And then we had another, uh, I think it was a pick six. Uh, you know, that, that showed up. Um, so, I mean, of those 19 points, no matter how you look at it, I mean, the defense had their uh, least uh, scored upon uh, plays uh, of the season. So um, that's encouraging. Defensively, what was the biggest difference between the game earlier this season in September against Manchester at the high school <laughs> than, than Saturday? Um, the biggest difference is, it was a war of attrition. You know, we we're you know we're depleted. They're depleted. I think uh, their starting quarterback was not playing. Uh, their number two quarterback, as is op- often the case, is nowhere near as good as number one, which gave us an opportunity to face Manchester at less than their full offensive uh, power. You know, but once again. You know, we played a ton of freshmen. I, I know I think we started eight or nine freshmen in that particular game on defense. And uh, those guys stepped up to the plate and um, did a good job. I mean, uh, you know, some Michael Myers, I thought, had his best game of the season. And I was a defensive back for us and um, was was just um, really fired up about, about, about the passion that he played with and all that. And uh and you know, we had some other guys step up on the D-line. I mean, just across the board, I think they, they played with more passion and they swarmed to the ball, and we didn't give up um, nearly the number of explosive plays we did the first time we yeah, played. You had a, a good goal line stand I think, yeah. pretty early, first mm-hmm. few minutes that – Kind of set the tone, maybe defensively. Defensively, it did. The problem was they got a safety, <laughs> safety real quick yeah. on us, so yeah. so that w- that was an issue there. But uh, but there's no question. I think uh, you know as a as a unit, they they played better. Uh, I think they're capable of playing uh, much better. Uh, just uh, finishing some things, but but they are playing great, and I, and I think. Uh, you know, when it comes to that, that we, we've got something that uh, we can build on to uh, heading into this Saturday's game. Offensively. Take me through that. I, I know it was a struggle, mm. obviously, throwing it. What what yeah. issues kind of plugged you on Saturday overall, Coach? I mean, we came out, you know, we had receivers open all over the place, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't target them. You know, we couldn't hit them. I mean, it was, you know, we start out and, you know, and um, our first quarterback goes in, Cole Wrecker, and, you know, he basically goes 0 for 9. Uh, throwing the ball and that that makes it difficult when you want to come out and you got guys open all over the place and we're overthrowing them or you know we're just off target and you know there was a couple drops in there too but it was just something that was a lack of of efficiency and and some of it you know it wasn't just on him it could have been a little bit of it it was the protection unit and a little bit of it you know was just uh, something being off at some point but we had to make a change and we made multiple changes in that first half we just had to find a hot hand or yeah yeah and we and we didn't find a hot hand and at halftime i just made a decision to go back to reggie washington who's more of an option quarterback and um, at least we started to create some more explosive plays we threw the ball a little bit better 
And, um, you know, we had 100 yards, uh, you know, basically passing in the second half where we had five yards passing in the first half. So, you know, that change was warranted um, and uh, just something we had to had to take a look at and uh, see what we could do. But Reggie's a senior, and we just figured, uh, you know, at that point I figured, hey, let, let's let's go with the senior and see if we can get something to happen. And, and, and I think uh, overall we did, but not enough. We didn't finish getting the end zone like we should have. Running game, take me through that aspect of Saturday. Well, you know, the running game was uh, – really one guy – showed up the best for us was that's brandon beckford i mean he had 10 carries 53 yards and you know he is a uh, you know a, a slight built guy you know short uh can make some moves and do some things and um and i think he he definitely had his best game of the season with explosive plays i mean he i mean his best one he, he busted one for 22 yards so i mean it was something that i felt like okay He's making progress, but there's another freshman right there, too. So, I mean, you know, we were just kept putting some guys in there, and he got the hot hand, and uh, Coach Wilson just um, said, hey, let's stay with him because he can, uh, you know, he, he's, like, as you say, has the has the opportunity to get us uh, where we need to go, and he, and he made some good plays. So I think that rushing side of it was good. You know, Reggie carried the ball four times for 18 yards, so that was – you know, between the two of those guys, we we're getting about five yards a pop, and um, and and, that, and that's that's pretty solid at this point, and um, so something to build off of for yeah. this week. You feel like your receivers getting open? There's some opportunities there in the passing game here. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, we thought so, and the thing is, the same thing happened at Rose Hallman. I mean, we're sitting there we're, against Rose Hallman, we're in no backs, five wides, and guys are open all over the place and you know we're taking sacks and and need to get rid of the ball quicker and the, that type of deal so I mean that's on us as coaches I mean we got uh, just coaching the urgency of it and getting the ball out of your hand faster and uh, and playing that way so a lot of this stuff with the with the quarterbacks are things that have to be developed in the offseason and the spring ball and so forth because um, even though we are in my estimation our best way to um, play in this conference is as a run and shoot team it's just going to take um, a you know a good spring ball to get everything installed with quarterbacks that we have in the house yeah big one this week battle for the hammer coach what have you learned in a little over a year about this rivalry with with Bluffton well I always knew it was a big rivalry you know you mm-hmm. you, 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 you know there's certain games in every league that you, you know these two teams match up and uh and you so, coached with a, a yeah, Bluffton guy yeah Mike Kelly who was yeah. my uh, the head coach when I was at Winnipeg and uh and also at Widener and um and he's in their Hall of Fame up there as a quarterback. And um, so he's a beaver, you know, one of those things. And we've just, uh, you know, he, he told me when I took this job, that's the one game he could not root for me. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and, and I get it. And it, it's just, um, I knew what it was about. Um, uh, I think last year w- was interesting to me because um, on our campus, I just, for good or bad, and I think it's bad, I, I don't know that we – uh, as a campus um, embraced last year in the first year we played them, embraced what the rivalry is. As we, we were basically just going up there with, with the team and playing the game. And, you know, the, the, the players were, you know, even though it was f- ridiculously cold, but um, it was something that I thought we were excited to play in. But um, on the campus itself, it was like it was dead. There was nothing, nothing really, oh, it's Bluffton week, nothing like that. You know, and then I'm looking online and I'm seeing, oh, you know, at Bluffton, they've got a bonfire going on Friday night. They got people in the, their bands out there playing. They're all fired up. They're burning a the yellow jacket and effigy, you know, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And it's like yeah. crickets here. I'm like, okay, so we, we got to build something like that up. And um, I think over time, you know, we need to get to that point where it means a lot more here um, to play that particular football game because uh, it, historically it has meant something. And um, I know to our alums it means something. It certainly means something to us. And, um, you know, I, I think that's an area that uh, I just think, you know, as a community we, we need to start moving in that direction because the, they'll probably have a bonfire Friday night before they come yeah, up here. Right, so that's just right, what they do. You right. Know? How quickly did people start talking to you, alumni, former players, whatever it be, about this game when you got hired coach? Was it first day, first week, almost right away? Uh, yeah, I mean, you'd hear about 
that yeah. you know and and you know last you know and i've had some guys that were graduate assistants here and that played in that game and you know could give me some insight about it you know clay fox would, would talk to me about it and uh you know and and just how big a deal it was and uh you know i just think that um it is imp- more important to our alumni than the current student body that's mm-hmm. all that is just you know it's just something we have to um from Embrace. a school spirit yeah. standpoint yeah, from that, that standpoint, I think we have to embrace that because it is. It's a heck of a game. And uh, regardless of records or anything like that, we want to put our best foot forward and and um, see how we can do it. Because if you can close out the season with a victory, um, it does a lot going into the off season. Yeah. Do you treat this week any different when you're playing a rivalry game or is it business as usual? Oh, no, it, it has to be different uh, this season. You know, I mean, down the road, it, it may be, you know, a little different. Uh, it, it may be, you know, hey, it's business as usual because you're getting ready to just play a 10th game and hopefully you're playing an 11th after that mm-hmm. down the road. So, um, but we know that they're going to be very fired up. And I, I think for us, the difference is going to be the type of practices we have to execute. Um, the spirit of the practice, the uh, efficiency of the practice has to be a lot more attention um, because we know, I, I think our guys that were here a year ago know what it is we're about to face because they do play with, um, this is a huge game, you know, it, it's just, I want to make it as big a game for us as it is for them. I just don't, I haven't felt that it is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and um, you know, and part of it is that, 75% of the roster are freshmen. Yeah. They don't a little, know. A little disadvantage for you with so many young guys yeah. that don't know the rivalry. And Bluffton obviously has. Yeah. They have a guys, bunch of older junior, guys seniors that, that have played. played. Yeah. Yeah. So that I think that in and of itself is part of why, may, why maybe it's even on campus, not what I would think a rivalry game was, mm-hmm. you know, or should be uh, when you're playing. I mean, I'm at other schools I've been at, those bonfires and things like that are huge. You know, and um, I think, like I said, we'll we'll head in that direction because I think these young guys that we're bringing in right now, um, we feel very good. We're going to be able to retain retain a record uh, number uh, from what has been done in the past four or five years. So um, those guys will have gone through this game and uh, then we'll have a couple classes that have been through it. Yeah. What do you tell the younger guys about this game? Or maybe that's comes from your, your seniors that you have and, and juniors, too. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah. The seniors have to step up and explain a little bit about what this is to the other guys. Um, yeah, I, I think the maybe the best way for a young guy that's not from the area uh, is is just to hey, remember when you played your high school rival? That's what this is, you know. Except it's another level yeah. because these are grown men. They're not just you know teenagers out there playing, you know. And it's just you know you understand they're going to bring it, and you, you have to bring it, and. Um, I think that's the only way, you know, you know, I went to Shadyside High School. We played River High School down in Hannibal. Huge game, sell mm-hmm. out every time, and and to this day it's still a big game. And, um, you know, it happens all over the place. You know, back home, you know, eastern Ohio, there's Bel Air Martins Ferry where, I mean, that's a classic game a lot of people don't know about. But it's like they always play a Saturday afternoon, and they played it last week and um, or two weeks ago. And every Friday night – uh, the gates open. It's a game on Saturday. There are well over a thousand people tailgating Friday night for a Saturday afternoon wow. game. That to me yeah. is a rivalry, right? You know, right. And, and there's shoot everybody. You know, a lot of people don't know. I mean, you know, you got guys like um, yes, I, I I digress, but you know, you get a, like Martin's Ferry where Lou the Toe Grows have played, you right. know, and a bunch of other guys. Bel Air, Joey Galloway. That's one of. He's not even nearly the best guy that played up. Jerry Bel-Air. Beauty. Jerry Beauty. That's another guy, yeah. you know, so that those that's what happens back there. And that's on the river. And that's how they do it. And we have games up here that, that are like that right. rivals in high school football. And um, I think um, that, that's just what I've seen. You know, I've been part of Kansas State, Kansas, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Texas. I mean, all these games that, you know, you look at the whatever the Holy War it was a. Uh, 
Wyoming BYU, which was crazy, you know, right. the whole Mormon deal, you know, that was going on because we had Mormon players. They had a lot of them, you know, so it's like there's those things are there's all Army, Navy. I mean, it's all there. Ohio State, Michigan, you know, those are all big games. We have to uh, embrace that and uh, over time develop it and get our alumni back for it. And I, I feel like we'll have quite a few back for this game and a lot watching you know, on Saturday um, all over the country. Speaking of your alma mater, I'm sure there's some shady side folks that listen to this. They're still alive in the playoffs. Absolutely. They crushed Sims Valley. Yes, yes. 53 to nothing. Right. Uh, Shady side's legit. I mean, they've always been a – I mean, they've been a great football program. It's a little town that – on the river that uh, always has more people at every home game than they have in the town so <laughs> yeah. you go figure that out you know you, yeah. you know so it, it's pretty cool deal uh, you know there's one thing i'm a little disappointed about that with the ohio high school uh, association where like on friday nights if, if even if i'm out scott looking at a game at a high school game i always on facebook i get this um facebook live feed from Shady Side High School, where a buddy of mine, uh, Doug Campbell, who's literally a, a neighbor of mine back home, and he will be on the sideline and he'll be making commentary, showing the game. And I'm thinking, oh, this will be great. I can next, you know, Friday I'll be out somewhere and I can watch it on my the phone. Stay next to that. Yes. What is that Facebook Live? Just because he is associated with the high school, he could not broadcast it. And I'm like, it's Facebook. I, I think that's a travesty. Because, um, you know, there's sometimes Doug will be putting that deal on there and there'll be like hundreds of people. I mean, hey, I'm in Hawaii watching the game. I'm in right. Florida. You know, it's like that's awesome. I mean, that's only good for you're, high school you're football. You're taking away money from the state, though, Coach. On Facebook. Yeah. For people in Hawaii and Florida and that would never come to a <laughs> high school know. football game. Hey, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. I'm just. I'm disappointed in that because, you know, um, we all follow our teams. I just think something like that is just petty. Uh, I wish they would fix that, you know. Right. Don't get it. Don't get it, you know. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, but I I think with with, with our deal here, I'm excited about Saturday. We have a good opportunity ahead of us to uh, finish on a high note. And I, I know, um, you know, Bluffton does a good job coaching their guys. They've got you know, a lot more seniors than we have, but um, it's just as important to our seniors as it is theirs. Right. Give us some input on Bluffton. What, what do you see strengths that they have this season, Coach, that you've seen on film? Well, I think what I've seen is that they are a team that um, – when they when they went to a new quarterback uh, for the Anderson game, they put a freshman in there that's a good passer. Um, that they, they started winning, you know. They made that switch, you know. So it's like they had the guy there. They they beat them. They beat Manchester, and um, and they almost. I mean, they played a really good game against Franklin last week and lost right. ten to nothing. So I mean, right. they're they're on the upswing with a lot of veterans. You know, sort of work in their game right now. Uh, you know, they've, they've got a great running back, one of the best in our conference that has been on again, off again for, I mean, Nate Jensen told me for three years, you know, this young man has been injured, back, injured, mm-hmm. back, yep. and, and he's one, of, and he's playing well. So it's like, oh boy, here we go. So, um, you know, I, I think they, they want to go into the offseason on a positive note. We do, you know, we're going to throw caution to the wind and, um, you know, and just play our best. Yep. Now, before I let you go, I, I know that Eric Strickland posted on the uh, the Facebook alumni this morning. I saw wanted to know kind of what you're doing to retain guys. And you just kind of talked about it that you said that you yeah. were going to have some record numbers. Take me through that from a coaching standpoint. Maybe answer some of those questions that alumni are throwing out there. Sure, Eric. Okay, good. I'm glad you asked that. And uh, I am remiss to not being on the doing a lot of Facebook lives. Uh, this season, you know, we're just uh, spent a lot of time with the team and recruiting. But but we have been doing this podcast every right. week, and, and we do the show every Monday night yep. over at Fricker. So, I mean, we're getting out there doing this. But, um, you know, from a retention standpoint, I mean, one thing is that a couple reasons that we feel confident that we can retain more of this uh, freshman class, the sophomore classes. One, uh, the GPAs are way higher than previous classes that came in as freshmen. So academically, uh, we're in a lot better shape. So um, that's sometimes the issue if a young man doesn't do well. Because your first, your freshman year, that first semester, 
you can be a 3.0 student even in high school and you come and it's like, oh, you're struggling to go 2.0 because it's college. You're just not used to the work. These guys have actually done a pretty good job with that. So I think academically we're in better shape. I think the bond and the culture of what it is we're doing here with our coaching staff and the players is significantly um, – improved as the season goes along compared to last year's when I'm comparing it to. And we recruited most of these guys where a year ago we didn't recruit any of the guys. We just showed up, you know, in August and said, open up this box. Here's your guys. You know, that, that was, that was the difference. So, you know, um, when we came in, we looked at retention and it was over the last six years uh, prior, the retention was like 18 to 20% you know, which isn't good, you know, that's not what you want. So our, we've, we've, we, we've made a, you know, a concerted effort to recruit the kind of students that want to stay here. And there were, all, there were a lot of myths about this, you know, they were saying, oh, if you get all these guys from Florida, they're not going to stay, or you get these guys from t- out of the further away. That's not really true. It's not true. We've got really good people here from all over the country. I mean, you know, you look at Damon Thomas, what's he from California, He's loving it. He's one of the top sack leaders in the conference, and he's a freshman that's playing, and he's a fantastic student, really high GPA, high three-point something, you know, and he, he loves it here. So that right. has nothing to do well, with it. Brian Mestre, coach. Well, we still can't get rid of him. He's can't still get here. rid of him. He's here, and he's loving it. You yeah, know, he's popular Florida guy. on campus. Yeah, I mean, you go on and on. You think about it, it has nothing to do. What it has to do with is their ability to handle the academic load and their maturity level. That's what matters. I mean, a young man could become from from uh, Wauseon, it, and if he can't handle the academic load, he's going to go home. That's really what it is, and it's and it's and I and I think when you look at it that way, the retention can be significantly higher by better GPAs, great culture, people engaged in what we're doing. I think the things that Jim Funderburg is doing for us by broadcasting those games is fantastic because now people are back home, talk Texas, Florida, they can watch their you know their son or daughter or brother sister play. They're they're more engaged in those kind of things. And, um, you know, but, but for a while, you know, uh, Defiance didn't do it with him. You know, we didn't broadcast it that way. We were just like putting a camera up and say, here's here's the game. Yeah. Without the commentary yeah. like what he does, which is way more professional. So, um, I mean, I think you, and we have to make strides in that as well. So, I mean, we have a plan. You know, throughout the off season, to really um, do a lot of things from a marketing perspective in the football program uh, that we'll be, you know, launching. And uh, you know, Brian Mester will be working with me on some of this stuff. And uh, you know, he he knows former player, he gets it. He knows what it is it takes to be here and stay here. And uh, you know, I, I think that you need people like that that care about um, Defiance College and, and the program. And that way, our players see that say, oh where'd he come from oh florida he's still here hmm why did he decide to stay yeah it's freaking cold up here some oh he likes it he bought a winter jacket that's all you need to do you know it's like it's not that hard i mean right. if it's gonna snow great no big deal you know and um it, you know i just think there's a lot here um a lot more here than other places i've been uh, as far as other colleges that, that make this a special place. So we're just working on selling that. And, um, you know, and I think, uh, shoot, I'm the first guy in a long time that stayed for two seasons, you know. And, it's been a while. Yeah, right? So here comes year three after this, and we're going to gear up. And, you know, we'll, we'll just uh, keep fortifying the roster and uh, teaching these guys life's lessons. And um, before you know it, hmm, you know, we'll be competing just fine. Absolutely. We'll continue with some podcasts, I'm sure, here in the off season oh, once, yeah, once absolutely. this week is over. and Yeah, we'll come back, uh, you know, next week and do a recap of the season. Um, yep. And, you know, um, you know, we've got so many cool things going on. It'll be fun. And uh, we do have a lot of uh, high school football players for the game uh, as guests this weekend. Uh, quite a few. I think uh, last I saw over 80 just football players. It, it could easily get over a hundred. Yeah, awesome. So that's that's a pretty neat deal to have that many kids on campus, and uh, a lot of guys are tops on our list. And um, 
I think when you look at it that way, it gives you an opportunity to sell what it is we've got. And, uh, you know, I know last week we had 40-some uh, guys here uh, high schools and, and they enjoyed the experience and you know they saw their opportunity to play which i think also uh, bodes well for retention yeah because you, you want to play you know and that right. that helps and we'll be uh, we started a jv program this year we're gonna really take another step forward next year with it and play more a lot more games uh, which i think also helps you know I, I i just think at this level you need to get the numbers up um, so we can um, make the experience better for everybody on campus. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Coach. Yeah, we'll, appreciate uh, it. Here wish you go. best of luck on Saturday against uh, the rival Beavers. Yeah, we'll have some fun with that, no doubt. And uh, I want to thank everybody um, for joining us on the Swarm and Shoe Football Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes, give us a rating, and make a comment below. If you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, as many of you do. Uh, Hit the bell for notifications at the top corner, and you can make comments on there as well. Um, We'll be um, throwing a few more questions out there next week. We'll have a little Q&A on top of this, and um, we will enjoy that as we head into uh, Bluffton week. and, um, and, And then the big season starts with recruiting after that. Sounds good. All right, y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.